Okay. It was an enchanted evening, and looking towards the dark eastern sky, she could see the bright, full silver moon rising over the treetops. When she looked right at it, she could see her breath billowing out of her mouth with every breath. It was strangely cold for an October. Turning, she looked westward past the tall red barn. The sky was bright orange with amber-lined clouds strung out on the horizon. The, me the metal milk cow on the red barn's rooftop pointed to the south. That, that's because a storm was coming tonight. Rosie pulled her sleeves down from her elbows past her hands. Then she wrapped her arms around herself and felt the warmth. This is the kind of night when she first saw him. He was standing in the alfalfa field over by the trees in the east. His snow white fur was glowing from the moonlight shining down upon it. He was watching the sunset behind the western horizon his fluffy tail curled up over his back. Rosie started to walk to him when suddenly she heard the loudest and saddest sounding coyote howl, almost wolf-like, the kind that makes laying hens fly up to the top of the rafters of the chicken house and tremble in fear. Ow! Again. Ow! She stopped where she was and saw a pure black wolf-sized coyote trot over to Juicy. They licked each other's face and they ran around in circles chasing each other's tail. Rose called to them and Juicy stopped, looked her way, and then trotted off with his newfound friend, the coyote. There were several other coyotes with him. He never looked back. Rosie turned and walked back to the farmhouse, went in and sat down on the end of her bed. Hannah Montana was danced across the screen, but Rosie never noticed because there was something on her mind a lot more important to her than a TV show, even if it was her favorite. Her mom and dad came in from the silver barn where they were loading a trailer with things to sell at mom's thrift store. They talked aloud and were laughing and both said something to each other and laughed again. They had been discussing something they always do, she thought. Mom saw Rosie sitting on the bed and knew right away that something was wrong. She came over to her and said, hello. Without looking up, Rosie said, hi. Rosie answered back with a little voice. Mom asked Rosie, you know what I said? No. Mom asked Rosie, you know what I said to the sad horse out in the barn? Rosie glanced up and says, what? Do you know what I said to the sad little sugar out at the barn? Well, I went in to sugar stall and I said to her, hi, sugar. Why the long face? Rosie smiled a little because sugar, like all horses, had long heads. Yep. Why are you looking long face? Asked Dad. Rose looked at her dad and at her mom, and then she softly said, looking down, I saw him again. Mom and dad looked at each other because they knew that Juicy was lost when he ran away last winter. It was zero weather for over a week with snow and sleet. They placed his dog food outside on the porch for a week, but no one ever ate it except a few old black crows pecking at it in the early mornings. And they both knew that little Juicy could not have survived in that cold snow storm that lasted for five or six days after Juicy was lost. Honey, said Mom, I told you before Juicy's gone forever. It's been almost a year now. Mom's <clears throat> right, you know, Dad said. Rose never responded. Mom and Dad looked at each other again, this time with a worried look on their faces. Mom thought back to the summer before Juicy was lost. She remembered taking Ushi and Juicy, they called them, with them across the gravel road past the lake in the woods 
and down the winding path through the tall oaks so thick that hardly sunshine could get through to the ground. It was always dark and spooky on this path of the trip to the big field where Mom searched for Indian rocks and arrowheads. Once Lucy got past, got lost, and Dad whistled for her like he does at home when he wants her to come in. Three times he whistled, like that. And all of us, including Juicy, stopped and listened for the sound of her scurrying through the leaves on the ground. Finally, Juicy heard her first, and then we all saw her running up from the uh, bottom of the hill. Then we continued to the arrowhead field to hunt. Those dogs loved to play in the leaves together. One time a big gray dog came to the house skulking around our yard. A little Juicy ran at him, barking, but the bigger dog was not scared. He bristled up the hair on his back and pinned his ears and growled. The big dog barked, his, bared his huge white teeth and lunged at Juicy and bit his neck so hard that red blood oozed out on his soft white fur. Oh, Juicy cried. Dad ran into the house for a shotgun, but it happened too fast. Suddenly, Ushi lunged, Ushi lunged at the big dog with lightning speed. She was so fast that the big gray dog could not stop her. He, she bit him on the tail, and when he turned to grab her, she was so quick she ran around the other side and bit him on the toe. The big gray dog stopped and yelled, Oh, 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 like stop biting me, you hussy. He turned around again and Ushi bit him on the tail again so hard as she could, as hard as she could, and, she, and the coward peed on himself right there on the spot and as he started running away. We laughed so hard, Ushi went over to Juicy and licked the tears in his eyes. Dad took him in the house for some Neosporum and a Band-Aid. The kids would like this if they'd sit still long enough for me to read it to them. Mm -hmm. That night we sat around the bonfire and drank hot chocolate telling the story of our big and quick thinking little Ushi Blue, the Wonder Dog. That was over a year ago, but tonight Mom and Dad looked back at Rosie sitting on the end of her bed and Looking up at them, Mom says, What is it, Rosie? I don't want to tell you why, Mom. Says, Go ahead and tell us, honey. Dad said, I, uh, uh, no, I'm not going to say it. You'll just be mad. Mom looked at her again and says, What is it, Rosie? Dear, tell us. Rosie slowly looked up at Mom and Dad and looked at them with tears in her eyes and said softly, I saw Juicy with a coal black wolf-looking coyote. They were friends, and they were playing with each other, and there was other coyotes there. Ridiculous, Dad said. Wolves and coyotes do not play with dogs. They kill them. And that's probably what happened to little Juicy. He was killed by a coyote. Get over it. Dad sat down in a chair in the kitchen to drink his coffee. He had a disgusted look on his face. He shook his head from side to side and said it was just like tonight, last year, when we lost him. A storm was coming, and that little dog could have survived, could not have survived in the cold rain like it was coming. And like tonight, Rosie turned to her mother, who was also looking disgusted at the word Rosie had said. Then Rosie added, he's out there, Mom. I saw him in the moonlight. And we can find him if we go before the storm comes. If we wait, the clouds will cover up the moon and we won't be able to find anything. It'll be too dark. Rosie started crying, for she knew that her mom and dad did not believe her, even though she had not, she was not pretending. But they just would not believe her. Oh, what's the use, she said. Suddenly, mom storms by Rosie and yells at dad, Get up! Get up and bring out the raincoats from the back closet. What for? Asked Dad with a surprised tone. Well, you don't want to get all wet tonight, do you? Rosie was smiling because she knew Mom believed her finally. They packed the red trailer with pillows, cushions, and blankets. Mom carried out the last box with sandwiches, Pepsi, and chips. 
Dad could not believe Mom was really doing this, probably just to please a seven-year-old kid. But that's the way Mom was. She knew it was important to show a little, little one that you trust them sometimes. So Dad went along with it because Mom asked him to. They looked up the, they hooked up the black blazer, pulled the red trailer out into the middle of the alfalfa field, opened both doors. Dad sat in a chair at the end of the trailer. Rosie sat in Dad's lap. Ushi sat in Mom's lap, and they were there watching as the big orange sun slowly sunk below the horizon, bringing out the stars that twinkled at each other, and they were hooked up to a blinking Christmas tree. The night would have been pitch black dark had it not been for the moon and stars that played through the clouds. They were starting to gather over the south horizon. They rested there for almost an hour before the wind hit. It started blowing and it created the damp chill in the air and Dad covered Rosie and himself with a blanket and a raincoat over that. The rain splashed up under the roof of the trailer some of it hit in their faces. It rained hard for some time. In fact, until midnight. Rosie woke up first. The rain had gone to Illinois, and the trees were dripping the last of it onto the alfalfa below. Otherwise, it was as quiet as a graveyard, and the stillness woke up Dad, Mom, and Lucy. They were just about to go in when Lucy jumped down and whined. She looked at the pond area that lay beneath the persimmon tree. Rosie looked too. Mom saw her staring and poked Dad with her elbow. What's that? Dad said as he stood up taller than the rest of them. Where? said Mom. Over there on the far bank of the pond. A mist was rising from the water making a strange picture. The moon was reflecting off of the surface and into the foggy air making it hard to see through. I don't see anything, Mom said. Dad reached down and lifted Rosie to his shoulders. From up there, you can see, he said. And you're young, your eyes are better. See it, Rose? Dad asked. Yeah, said Rose. It's juicy. He's sitting alone with his nose pointed up in the air, and he's howling like a wolf. Oh, oh. It made the hair stand up on the back of Dad's neck. It can't be juicy, growled Dad. Dogs don't howl like wolves. But it is him, Rose, said again. Whistle for him, Dad. Hurry before he runs away. Ah, what's the use? Go on and whistle, Mom said. What's the difference it make? So what if she's only wishfully thinking? She's our only girl, and she wants her daddy to whistle for a dog. So whistle. gave out a special whistle three times and they all tried looking through the misty night air to the far side of the pond where Rose said, Rosie said she saw Juicy sitting. Well, Dad said, do you still see him? Rose looked hard, but to no avail. The image was gone and she was sad when she said, I just knew it was him. I thought I saw him several times. Was it just my imagination, Mom? Was it? I guess it was, honey, answered. Mom answered. As she hugged Rosie to her breast, Dad said loudly, Okay, guys, let's pack it all up. Go home. We're done with this dog thing. It's late, and I'm sleepy. Mom said, Rose put Ushi in the truck so she don't wander off somewhere. We don't want to lose that dog. Dad, you put everything back into the trailer, and I will roll up the blankets. In five minutes, they were ready, and Mom said, Rose, I thought I told you to put Ushi into the blazer. Rose didn't answer because she was already asleep. So Mom just reached down, picked her up, showed the dog in the front seat between her and Dad, who drove home over the wet hayfield and through the green gate. They were all so sad because they knew how badly Rose wanted Juicy back. Dad was sad also because Juicy had become close to him because he liked to stay wherever he was. Oh, well, Dad said, we had fun pretending to wait for a little white dog to come home. 
after running around with a bunch of wolves. Yeah, thanks for going along with it. When they reached the house, Dad parked the blazer in the drive where he started to unhitch the trailer. I'll just leave it, Mom says, till tomorrow. Let's go in, it's late. Then Mom said, I'll take Ushi. You carry our sleeping Rosie. I'll leave the door open so you can carry her to the couch in the living room. Dad grabbed some paper and a couple of Pepsi cans, empty ones, and carried them to the trash can. He went back to carry Rosie into the house. But when he got there, there was Rosie laying with the dog girl up in her lap. I thought, he grumbled, Mom forgot the dog. I know she said to carry him out. Oh, well, he struggled to pack them both and staggered with the weight of the, them in his arms. And he stopped just inside of the door and let the dog down, and it scurried inside in front of him. Dad tucked Rosie in and went to the kitchen for her chocolate milky. Mom sat at the table reading, and as he mixed the old teen, he said to her, why didn't you say you were going, why did you say you were going to carry Ushi in and then left her there for me to carry in along with Rosie? Mom looked at Dad with a confused look on her face. I did carry her inside. No, you didn't, said Dad. I did, said Mom. No, you didn't. Did so. Did not. Did so. Did not. <laughs> did so. <laughs> the last page. Then suddenly they both stopped, looked at each other with eyes open wide, and both turned and ran to the living room. And there, sure enough, beside the couch where Rosie lay sleeping, lay two white Maltese dogs snuggling together. It was Ushi and Juicy, together again at last. Rosie was right. He had been found by the coyotes and saved from the freezing temperatures by sleeping with them in their, what's that word? Lair or something? Or whatever, their house. <laughs> Den? But now he was back home with his real family, thanks to little Rosie, who just would not believe he was gone forever. <laughs>